What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So I figured it's time we start working back on the second gen. Now I'm not talking about this red and blue second gen. I'm talking about my lifted second gen that's at the shop right now. We need a sway bar for this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and steal it off of the red and blue truck. I was going to take it off the dually, but the previous owners went ahead and tried pulling this truck out with the sway bar and it got bent a little bit. So that sway bar is actually useless. Now it's been so long since we worked on the second gen, but we're finally getting right back into it. We're gonna finish this thing up hopefully here soon. The last month I've been working on a channel with Hunter. If you guys remember him, What the Duck? We've been working so hard on it the last month. Go ahead over to our new channel, Slushbox. Give it a subscribe. We're gonna go ahead and pump out a lot more videos on that channel. I will leave it linked in the description below, but we're headed to the shop right now. I got a box right here that we'll show you guys a little bit later. But we're gonna go ahead and get this sway bar installed. Some of y'all might be thinking, Jonathan, why are you putting a sway bar in your truck? Some trucks don't even run a sway bar. Well, the purpose of a sway bar is to ensure your vehicle doesn't roll too much when it's handling. And with the truck lifted this high, I definitely wanna make sure I have a sway bar on this thing. At first, I tried using the original two wheel drive sway bar, but it ended up not working. I needed a four wheel drive one for the axle, so that's what we're putting in. Now that the sway bar is installed, let's tear into the package. Now let's get right into this package right here, sent out by Alloy Works. So what I have in this box is Alloy Works Strength and Cooling 4 Row Radiator with dual 16 inch fans. This radiator and shroud is made with Aircraft AA 5052 grade aluminum. The tank and fittings are all 2 millimeter thick so it ensures hardness and durability. The package includes your 4 row radiator, your CNC machine radiator cap, your aluminum shroud, two 16 inch fans, and your thermostat relay kit. Each 16 inch fan runs on DC 12 volt and each fan pulls 2150 CFM. The thermostat kit activates by grounding electric fans at a preset temperature. So that means they turn on at 185 degrees and they turn off at a 165 degrees. So that way it's not just running constantly. 90% of the market uses the cheaper T3303 aluminum, but like I said, Alloy Works uses AA 5052 aircraft aluminum, making it at least 30 to 45% more efficient than stock ones. This aluminum radiator is gonna look so good in the second gen. First impressions of this radiator with the electric fan kit on the back side. I absolutely love this thing. It is full aluminum. So you're not gonna have any plastic on the sides. It is fully welded aluminum. You got a CNC cap right here. It looks absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to powder coat the shroud for this thing when we do all the other powder coating for uh, the truck once we get it done. One thing I did notice right off the bat with the electric fan and radiator combo is that it did not have a spot for the coolant reservoir or the windshield wiper fluid. Uh, reservoir. This is another brand right here and it has a spot for both of your coolant reservoir and your windshield wiper fluid reservoir. So you guys just got to keep that in mind when looking to buy a kit like this. If it has it, if it doesn't, you're gonna have to figure out a way to mount it up yourself. I think what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and tidy up this engine bay because I did have these fenders off when I went ahead and wrapped the truck. Everything isn't connected, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect everything, get it, the whole engine bay all situated, and then we'll start working on the radiator. Now that it's somewhat together, let's get started. I had a bucket ready and everything. I don't think there's one person in the world that can get all of the coolant in the bucket without dripping it on the ground. This radiator that I just took out has seen better days, let me tell you what. It is so greasy and just, it needs to be replaced. Now typically when you replace a radiator, you don't have to take the intercooler out, but I wanted to get easier access to taking off the fan and also tidy some more stuff up in the engine bay. The easiest way pretty much to get these fans off is just use an air hammer. Got it loose. Should come right off now. There it is. Easy. So I still have a mess of wires to get through, but for the most part, we got the front end, all the wires taken care of, batteries back in, battery trays, headlights in, and stuff like that. But there's a couple things we need to talk about with this radiator real quick. Now, unfortunately, someone was using the sandblaster, so the audio is just terrible in this clip. But to reiterate, there were some things with this radiator kit that 
um, I personally didn't like. The first one was that there was no studs on the top of the radiator. All right, hold up, wait a minute. Forget what I said about the studs being on top. I'm not sure if they meant to do this or I just found this just me trying to figure out where this wire is gonna go. But there's two studs on the top for each fan. If you go ahead and bend these little tabs that actually fit onto the studs on the original radiator, if you bend them um, back towards you and you take the nut off and take the washer off, you can slip this down onto the stud, put the washer back on, put the nut back on, screw it down, and now it is completely clean. Like I said, I'm not sure if they meant to do it like this, but I found a way to get it to work. It looks absolutely, dude, it looks so much cleaner than having the wire run on the top of the radiator. The next thing I didn't like was that the kit didn't come with the actual fan plugs, so you're gonna have to figure out, either you're gonna cut the wiring harness or you're gonna have to buy extra plugs um, because they didn't come with this kit. And then the kit came with a temperature probe, but on the radiator itself, there's no bung on there to screw it into. So you're either gonna have to drill a hole and weld a bung on yourself, or just not use it because it's, it's pointless without a bung already on the radiator. And then the last thing I mentioned earlier was there's no spots to hold the reservoirs. Remembered I gotta put the uh, intercooler in first. All right guys, as of right now, this is as far as I can go with installing this radiator. I have it all in, I have the hoses all hooked up. I just can't finish the whole thing because one, I don't have the pigtails to go to the electric fans, which I wish they would have provided that. I would have been able to wire everything up. And then also with a thermostat, it's not really a big deal. If I don't have it, it's just the fans will be on 24 seven. As long as the truck is on, they will be running. If I only wanted to have them turn on at a specific time, the thermostat would come into play. I wish they would have welded a bung in there so you can go ahead and thread that in if you wanted to use it and then provide you with a plug. If you didn't want to use it, you can plug off that bung so it's there if you wanted to use it and it's there if you didn't want to use it. You can you know, use it for something else, I guess. I don't know. Overall, I'm super pleased with the construction of this radiator. It is a four row. Most of the time, the cheaper options are only two rows. So with this radiator, you're gonna get 30 to 45% more cooling than a cheaper stock option. And with the AA 5052 aircraft aluminum, it's gonna make sure that this radiator holds up for a very long time. With all the good things I've said about this radiator and my personally, the bad things that I don't like about this radiator in this review, if you guys wanna check this out, I will leave it linked down below. And if you use code DIP8, You'll get 8% off your order, and I will get a small commission from that if you guys want to help support the channel. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos where we keep working back on this 2001 Dodge Ram 2500 axle swap, four-wheel drive, four-link in the front, coilovers in the front, whatever you want to call it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Dippin' Diesel, out.